This Helpful Hints video has been developed to support the instruction manual with the assembly steps that are more challenging and critical for a smooth installation of your wood gazebo with aluminum roof. Working on a flat, solid, and raised surface such as a table or sawhorse will help with the alignment of the beams. In part one, have one person look down the beam assembly to ensure it is straight while another person tightens the wafer bolts securing the assembly. When attaching the beam end short assembly to the beam end assembly in part two, place a 3 8 of an inch bolt through one hole for the gusset at each end as shown here. Then align miters so they are flush at one end and install the screw closest to the miter. Repeat this at the other end. If the miter at the second end is not flush, loosen the four wafer bolts on the beam short assembly. Adjust to make flush and install the screw closest to the miter. Then go back and retighten the wafer bolts. Throughout step four and five, refer often to the measurements outlined in the color insert that came with your gazebo kit. For future alignment of the assembly, it is crucial that all measurements are accurate. When attaching the beam assemblies to the post assemblies, make sure the corners of the beam assemblies are flush before tightening the 3 8 of an inch by 10 and a half inch hex bolts. Once the beam assemblies are attached to the post assemblies in step 4, part 1, make sure the following measurements are met before securing the beam assemblies to the post assemblies and anchoring the gazebo. 13 feet 11 inches diagonally between posts, 11 feet from outside to outside of posts, each post assembly is square to the beam assemblies, each post assembly is level, each beam assembly is level. You should have four people to help adjust the posts in this step. As you are attaching the gussets in step 5, make sure to remeasure level and square everything and adjust if necessary to ensure all measurements on the color insert are met. Work on a flat solid and raised surface such as a table or sawhorse when assembling the fascia beam and roof rafter assembly. In step 7 part 1 it is important to make sure all corners are flush have one person hold the boards in place while another person installs the wood screws. Repeat this at each corner. When attaching the rafter to the fascia beam assembly, make sure the rafter is centered to the two pilot holes before installing the wood screws. If the strap short and strap are not flush to the rafter corner left or rafter corner right in step 7 part 2, have someone hold the board in place while a second person fastens the wood screws. Please note, gloves are essential for this portion of the assembly as some roofing material has sharp edges. To prevent scuffing, only remove protection film from the aluminum parts when they are required for assembly. If you're using a power drill, be careful not to over tighten the roofing screws and damage the roof panels. We recommend hand tightening the roofing screws and only until they are snug and tight. Start with the roof rafter assembly flipped over on a flat, solid and raised surface such as a table or sawhorse so the roof to beam brackets are at the bottom and the strap and short strap are on top. When installing the left long panel, ensure it is flush to the rafter corner left and the holes in the rib are centered on the rafter. There will be a slight overhang on the fascia beam assembly. Overlapping the ribs, lay the right long panel in the same fashion. Once both the left and right long panels are aligned, attach them to the roof rafter assembly using four roofing screws. Repeat this with all four roof rafter assemblies. In step 9 part 2, place the left short panel onto the roof rafter assembly so that it connects to the left long panel. It is important to make sure the left short panel is flush to the corner rafter left and slightly overhang the fascia beam assembly. Repeat this with the right short panel. Note, it is okay if the aluminum panels are not quite flush with the rafter corner left or right, but they cannot overhang. If the aluminum panels overhang the edge of the rafter corners, 
Loosen the roofing screws at the top of the assembly. Then remove the other three roofing screws. Adjust all of the roof panels so they are aligned correctly with the roof rafter assembly. Then replace and tighten the four roofing screws. Do not attempt this in windy or gusty conditions. You will need four people and three step ladders to attach the roof panels to frame in step 11. Place an 8-foot ladder in the center of the frame assembly and the other two on the either side of the beam assembly as seen here. Have two people carry over one roof panel assembly with roof to beam brackets and pass it to the other two people standing on ladders. Make sure that one person always remains at the center to support the peak of all the roof panel assemblies. Note, the center roof to beam bracket on each of the roof panel assemblies must line up with the center of each beam assembly. As one person continues to hold up the roof panel assembly at the center, move the second roof panel assembly with roof to beam brackets into place next to the first one. Make sure the corners of the roof panel assemblies are flush and the roof rafter corners are flush together. Then starting at the bottom, connect the two roof panel assemblies with three hex bolts. If the corners or bolt holes are not perfectly aligned, have the person in the center push up on one or more of the roof panel assemblies to adjust the center height while another helps to align the corner. When everything is lined up, a third person can tighten the bolts starting at the bottom and working towards the peak while the other two hold the roof panel assemblies in place. Repeat this with the third roof panel assembly with roof to beam brackets. Remember to ensure all roof to beam brackets are lined up with the center of your beam assembly. The last roof panel is the most challenging piece to install. This step will require extra time to make any necessary adjustments and ensure correct installation of the roof. When lifting the last roof panel assembly without roof to beam brackets into place, the person at the center needs to push up on the peak loop to lift the peak cap and make room for the fourth roof panel assembly to be slid into place. You may have to shift and wiggle the assembly to get the fourth roof panel to fit into place. Just as in previous steps, remember to have the center person push up on one or more of the roof panel assemblies while others help to align the corners and the last person tightens the hex bolts. In step 14 part 3, have a helper lift the roof panel on the outside to allow the roof to beam bracket to be easily set in place before attaching it to the roof panel assembly. If the fourth roof panel does not fit, check or try the following. Make sure the roof to beam brackets have not been installed on the fourth roof panel. If they are, remove them please. Loosen the six hex bolts installed in step 11 that attach the first three roof panels together. This will allow the person in the center to make more adjustments to the first three roof panels. Refer to step 7 and step 9. Ensure that all parts to the roof rafter assembly are flush and that the roof panels are flush and do not overhang the roof rafter corners right and left. Refer to step 4 and 5. Ensure all measurements from the colored insert are met and all posts and beams are level and square. When securing the roof corners in step 15, have someone push up on the peak of the roof to ensure a tight fit at each corner and all roof to beam brackets are lined up over the center mark and are flush and tight to the beam assemblies. When everything is lined up, have another helper attach the roof panel assemblies together at each fascia beam end and then attach the roof to post brackets. On each corner, install the ridge cap over the ridge clips with the cut end leading and slide the ridge cap up towards the peak so it fits under the peak cap as directed in step 19. If there is an obstacle in the way that prevents you from sliding the ridge cap from the end, the cap can be clipped on part way up the ridge clip. To do this, bend the ridge clip up on one side and hook the ridge cap onto it. Push down until it catches the other side of the ridge clip, then slide the ridge cap the rest of the way up so it fits under the peak cap. Push down on the ridge cap to bend the ridge clip snug to the roof before fastening with screws. To adjust the roof peak when tightening, you can turn the carriage bolt until it sits square on the roof.